Initialize sequence. Yo, what up? This is Prozac. This is Shaq's too dope from his St. Cloud posse. Oh, uh, yeah, this is Brief. Yo, this be the one them called Tech Nine. What's up? This is Mad Child. This is your boy Spider Man, aka Brother Lynch, huh? Jared from Head PE. And Yo, what up? This is Hop. My name is Recognized. Rob Rich. This is Boondock. Yo, this is Blaze, you dare homie. Welcome to the Underground, Australia's home of underground music. Here we go for episode 9 of The Underground Amped. It is Ned joined by Nim Azor. Nim, how are you, dude? Hello there, the fuck? Oh, good, thanks, brother. Hell yeah, and Jay is here in spirit. This one's going to be a big one, Nim, because it is part one of a big double special. Mick Foley on the show, if you don't mind. WWE legend. Mm, hell yeah, the hardcore legend. And he is a very, very busy man, So. We managed to catch him like in between hotels. We had to do two interviews with him. That's how big this was. That's how busy that man is. But uh, you'll be looking forward to hearing part two, where I had a chat with him uh, next week here on The Underground Amp. Yeah, that's right. And part one, he dropped some bombs in this one too. Well, not really bombs, but just some surprising stuff, which we'll let you stick around for. But of course, Mick is being part of two big events that are coming up in July. First up, it is the House of Hardcore. Nimi will be covering that. All things wrestling. And then me, I talked to him about his current tour, the 20 Years of Hell Tour, which sounds like a great one as well, man. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. And something that I that Mick pointed out to me, and I wonder if he pointed it out to you too, Nettie, but this is not a stand-up show. It's a storytelling experience. <laughs> he did say that, man, <laughs> because the first thing I said to him was like, oh, Mick, when you think Mick Foley, you don't really think comedian. And then he's sort of like, haha, well, it's not really a comedy show, but I thought that was what it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's actually quite funny because, um, well, we won't spoil anything. Stick around at the end. You can hear part one. Nettie catches up with Mick Foley and uh, part two will be coming next week. But, yeah, House of Hardcore, it is coming to Melbourne July 13th, but it's also going to Perth, Brisbane, Adelaide and... Uh, Sydney, Sydney, <laughs> <laughs> No, but it is going to be all sorts of awesome. That House of Hardcore, we're really getting behind it here. And if you're after some good quality live pro wrestling and hardcore nonetheless, mm. Tommy Dreamer, he doesn't muck about. Hell yeah, and we saw, we were lucky enough to see their first House of Hardcore Australia show last year, and they had a Ring of Honor battle between Jay Lethal and Christopher Daniel there, so it was really, really cool. I strongly recommend if you are in Australia, or actually, even if you are, like, uh, you know, because we have many listeners across the pond in America, House of Hardcore events are always near you. Houseofhardcore.net is their website. They have some awesome shows, you get some really big names too, so check it out. It's a lot of fun, and there's plenty of House of Hardcore shows. So check it out. And you can also pick him up on DVD, which is pretty cool, too. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to getting there and merching up, Nim. I can imagine you'll have the credit <laughs> card out and boom. Oh, yeah, of course. You absolutely know that is exactly what I am going to do. Hey, but Nettie, look, we have to talk about that. Speaking of live events, we had the pleasure of going and checking out a pretty awesome live gig, which was Wednesday 13 and uh, Davey Suicide. It was a pretty decent show. We, we caught up with it, when was it? Last Saturday, which was pretty awesome. The fun thing was, so this was my first metal gig. It was awesome. I had a, I had the time of my life. And our resident uh, correspondent, when it comes to all things, you know, metal, mm. was J.C.L. Herbert. Yeah. The real J.C.L. Herbert. And... He looked like he was hating life. Yeah, and that's what I really wanted to talk about here, Nim. You've gone along to a show that you never would normally go and see. A fish out of water, if ever there was one. Look to be, you know, having fun with your friends and all that sort of stuff. Jay, this is like one of his favourite bands of all time. Uh, to use your words, he was extremely salty, angry, and spent most of the time sort of yelling and, you know, whatever at us. Yeah, it was it was really, really strange because this, this was his element. It was absolutely his element. And for some reason, maybe, look, you had a good theory. Maybe he didn't like seeing me there in his, in his term. Maybe that'd be like, I don't go to your little Venga quiz, get it to us. <laughs> You know, maybe that's what it was. But do you think that might be it? That I was, in, that was, I was intruding on his turf, and he's just kind of like, no, no, my watch is off. Yeah, well, maybe that's what it was like. He really may have felt like he couldn't put his hair down. He did mention that to me a little bit in the car the next day. He couldn't sort of be himself because he was worried that we'd be teasing him. But in the end, he did start headbanging. And I think the highlight of the night for me, apart from the great music, of course, was seeing the big fella do that headbang and catch that guy's phone. I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> How funny was that, man? I absolutely loved it. So let's just picture this. Let's picture 
that you're at a live show at the moment. You're there and you think, you know what, I'm going to pull out my smartphone, I'm going to check out, I'm going to video some of this. And you decide to do that. And then next thing you know, you have a rather large, obsessively, <laughs> how do I put it? How do, obsessively metal droogie headbanging and flicking his long hair back so much so that it smacks your camera. That is something that is hilarious. That's and what that's what went down, but it serves the guy right because he didn't just film one song. He filmed the entire show, which I thought was a little bit of an overkill. I, oh, yeah. I look forward to when he goes to watch that back. I wish I could be there, a fly on the wall when he, he does catch the JSL Herbert hair and whatever else was in that hair to the camera there. It would have been all sorts of funny. Oh, 100%, dude. And But yeah, like I said, it was a really, really awesome show. I had the time of my life, dude. Davey Suicide also was one of the support acts. We didn't get there in time to see the previous two, so I can't really comment too much on that because we actually went and saw it. It was actually a full day. This is what made it even funnier, too, considering the fact that, you know, we went and saw The Avengers ahead of going and seeing Wednesday 13 and Davey Suicide. So you'd think, Jay Love, loves movies. Jay loves metal. Jay loves his buddies. Well, you'd think that he does. <laughs> but it was like the worst day of his life. Oh, he really did seem to have an absolutely terrible time. I don't know what the guy does for a good time because for <laughs> me, like I said to you afterwards, that was probably one of the best days I'd had like this year. It was all sorts of awesome. And on the topic of the Avengers, we will talk a little bit about it, Nim. I <laughs> think, and to those listening, if you're not after spoilers, like there won't be too many sorts. No, no, but no. We, we won't get into it, but we'll, we'll just, I will just say that it did live up to expectations. It definitely did, but there was some sad spots in there and I think Nim the reason he may have been so weird and I have been thinking about this after the movie remember he went really really weird after the movie yeah very much so I think the big guy was a little bit upset and didn't want to sort of you know let us know that he does have feelings (laughs) he does not have feelings we all know he's got a big black heart there but nonetheless yeah it was it was a very strange one I could tell you that maybe you thought right and maybe perhaps that he doesn't want to play people can't see that I emotions. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's exactly what I was thinking, but who knows, maybe he was just thinking, these idiots are going to wreck Wednesday 13th for me. <laughs> who would know, but Avengers is a great movie there, Nim, and I highly recommend people check it out. I actually, I have a bit of a confession to make to you though, man, and I want to ask you this straight up, and you can yeah. say, say yay or nay. I was yeah. very tired that day, <laughs> and, and you know, we're a couple of old men. Uh, this is a confession, I, I actually had to go and see it again on a Tuesday night because I'd promised another buddy here in town, Timmy Nunsky, that I'd go see it with him. On the Tuesday night, there was so much more that happened in the movie than the first time I see it. I think I went to sleep for patches (laughs) throughout the first time we watched it. Is is that... Well, the thing is that it does go for about 139 minutes. First off, you saw your daughters play netball at the start of the day. Then you drove all the way from H-Town to the city, had to navigate roadworks and things like that while babysitting a giant baby. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, Drugi. I get those two syllables confused now. Yeah. But, uh, so, mate, yeah, look, it's understandable that it took it out. But I'm glad that you were able to take it all in because it was a very long movie. And like you said, like we said, this is 10 years that they've built up for it. 10 whole years. Yeah, and Nim, I don't know about you. What was the highlight for you? I'll go out and say that I think the Guardians of the Galaxy characters were the best in this one. Rocket, stole it. Actually, Thor was pretty cool in it as well. Thor and the Guardians were the absolute bomb there too. And there were just so many... It just had just the right amount of quips and just the right amount of action. And yeah, you're right. It is definitely a tearjerker, I can tell you that. Yeah, it is. It's got to the black heart of the Droogie even, so there you go. (laughs) And another one too, Nim, and I think we've talked about this a little bit, Spider-Man, the new dude playing Spider-Man, he absolutely nails that role. Yeah, he is absolutely fantastic, I think. And here's a weird thing too, because like, you know, we have a lot of nostalgia for guys like Tobey Maguire because it was like, he was a Spider-Man when we were kids growing up. But no, this guy, this guy's the, he's the absolute, shiznit so to speak (laughs) yeah I couldn't agree more man so I think we'll leave it on that just to not give away too many spoilers because of course we will have the big fella in next week and we'll go more into the Avengers side of thing Nim oh hell yeah hell yeah but yeah if you haven't seen it already go and see it now because next week we want to discuss it we want to talk about it we want to get that 
big stinking bastard in <laughs> and uh, find out what he thought of it and whether or not that's what made him all emo. Yeah, well, he is a big emo druggy. I mean, I, I just can't fathom that. These are his favourite things to do. Watch movies because he doesn't like to get off the couch much mm-hmm. and attend metal shows, which don't happen too often. Two in one day plus catch up with his his friend and his, you know, you are his friend by choice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what more you could want in a day, but he did seem very miserable and sour throughout, so that has to be the only reason. Yeah, well, let's hope so. Let's very much hope so. But, uh, and Eddie, something that we do need to talk about as well, the NBA playoffs are underway at the moment. We're into the semifinals, and things have been shaken up just a little bit, haven't they? Oh, well, they have, man. Well, today, an absolutely massive game there. The Utah Jazz, who I said last week, they're who I'm jumping behind in the West. I don't think they're going to get through, but they... Shaking up's the right word for it. And Joey Ingles had an absolute monster game today. 27 points, Nim. And he broke an Australian record for the most points by an Australian player in a playoff game, which is awesome to see. Hell yeah, dude. And this is the thing, too. Like, I'm pretty sure everyone thought that uh, because the Rockets have been a really good team this year and the Jazz are one down going into it. But somehow, Utah's offense was just ridiculous. Oh, it was cooking today, man, and love to see the Jazz, the underdog, doing well. And that was in Houston, too, so an away game there. They even things up. Going home, they play very well at home, too, so if they get the next two on the trot, which I would give them a chance to do, you never know, they could be going back to Houston 3-1 up. Yeah, you're not wrong, dude. And uh, let's also mention, dude, Dante Exum was pretty massive for the Jazz as well. And yeah, Another Aussie. Yeah, they're doing well. And, you know, when you have guys like James Harden and Chris Paul, you know, very close quiet during a game, it, well, it shows, doesn't it? Oh, most definitely does. So it's a bit of a case of watch this space as per usual, because by this time next week, you know, it could be a whole other story. But the, at the moment, Utah Jazz are looking pretty damn good there in the playoffs, Nim. Mm, mm, and very I'm, so, yeah. I'm going to give you a bit of a sneak peek, too, because we're about to jump into this interview with Mick Foley, but I'm not sure if Mick t- spoke about this with you, man. But basketball popped up with Mick and me, which I found very bizarre. <laughs> Oh, you'd be really surprised too, because uh, something that popped up with me and uh, Mick was his love for the Smashing Pumpkins, and that is not a joke. (laughs) That's fantastic. The more I find out about Mick Foley, the more I like about the guy, and I'm going to talk about this more next week, because I don't want to give away the entire interview, but there's another great thing about Mick that I had no idea about, which (laughs) which is heading your way very shortly, Nim. So, Smashing Pumpkins fan as well. Love Billy Corgan. That's Mm. awesome. So, part one of our interview is coming up next. This is me chatting to Mick about the 20 years of Hell Tour. Part two is with Mr. Nim Azor next week. Hell yeah. So stick around. We'll throw to that next. Thanks, Nim, for joining us, man. No dramas, dude. We'll catch you next week. Part one, coming up next. Hey, this is Wednesday 13, and you're listening to The Underground. Catching up with the one, the only, Mick Foley. Mick, how are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm on tour, and I'm looking forward to taking that tour over to Ireland in July. Yeah, I cannot wait for it, Mick. And when you sort of think the name Mick Foley, you don't instantly think comedian. How did you come about your comedic side of things, Mick? Well, I'm not looking at this as a comedy show. It's a, it's a spoken word show with a lot of comedic elements. It is, uh, you know, it's like uh, storytelling in the same way that uh, we told stories in the ring and then told stories on the page, and it's just a natural evolution. It's the closest thing I've ever come to getting those instantaneous reactions from wrestling fans. You tell stories, and uh, you take them on the same type of emotional uh, journey. You know, So there are laughs, but there's some gas, some touching moments, uh, even a, a, a tear every once in a while. Oh, look out, man. And is it a family-friendly type show, Mick? Is it something that everyone can get along to? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a PG, uh, <laughs> PG show. Australia uses harsher words to greet a good, loyal friend than I will use in the uh, you know nice <laughs> man on stage. Uh, trust me. I, uh, yeah, I maybe uh, use uh, a curse maybe one time in a 90-minute show, and I'm pretty proud of that. And there's no real uh, uh, sexual... <laughs> oh, the last time I was in Australia, <laughs> I did talk about an adventure that was a little... A little bit on the R-rated side. So, yeah, that was an R-rated show. This would be uh, PG unless somebody coaxes one of those stories out of me in the Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, that's good to know, Mick. Now, you're a bit of a jack of all trades, really. You're an author, wrestler, of course. you got your own series on the WWE Network. I wanted to know, man, what's your favorite thing to do outside of wrestling? 
Oh, well, I, you know, I'm one of those guys who celebrates Christmas all year round. Nice. Uh, I uh, have been known to uh, help out, be an ambassador for the, the guy in red, and uh, and then I also, I scrapbook. Really? Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah, I don't do any, like, the the, the cool WWE uh, guy, you know, I don't ride, like, a uh, monster truck, and no hunting, no fishing, it's just, uh, I tell stories through photos. Oh, there you it go, man. Sound very, doesn't sound very masculine, does it? <laughs> it doesn't really sound very Mick Foley, really. The man that jumped off the top of that steel cage or was thrown off it as their scrapbooking. I love that, man, though. That's really cool to know. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like a uh, flip side. Uh, warmth and wildness, wisdom and wit, <laughs> and hopefully in the shows. Oh, there you go. And I thought I might prepare you a little bit for the show, Mick. And I just wanted to know, how's your Aussie slang? You mentioned it there that we do have some bizarre lingo and we greet people with worse words than what you would use in everyday life. How's your Aussie slang? Uh, I don't believe it's up to par. I, I think I failed everyone when I saw the Australian player on the Celtics. I can't believe I don't know his name. I've watched almost every game this season. Um, Baines. But there was a, yeah, Baines, Baines. Yeah, there was a little contest on the scoreboard, and, and I was like, oh, I should do pretty well over there. I've been to Australia a few times, and I didn't actually do anything. So, oh. uh, yeah, hit me with it. I'll, I'll fail it. I'm not going to try to compete and try to adapt the lingo when I get on stage. Oh, okay, man. I thought you might be there making a little bit of fun of a sort of deal. So just before I do jump into that mix, are you saying you're a big Celtics fan? Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Uh, yeah, I have a vested interest in the Celtics. Because my son just decided he was a Celtics fan, and so we watch a game of basketball just about every night at the house. Oh, yeah, that's really cool to know. Our uh, Pistons fan here, so we're done and dusted for the year, but Celtics are doing pretty good at the moment. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I chose the Celtics game overall on Monday night, so... Um, wow. Last night. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a commitment. Well, there you go. Do you want me to edit that out, Mick? <laughs> uh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this Aussie slang. So I'm, I'm just going to give you five, and then we're hopefully catching up with Al Snow at some stage as well, and I'm going to give him the same five, and whoever wins gets bragging rights. Okay, let me, let me have it. All right, here we go. So, number one, the term taking the piss. Do you know what that means? Yeah, it means like the joke is on you or uh, something bad is about to happen to you. You're sort of making fun of someone. I think you guys call it busting balls over there. And there you go. You sort of, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're one for one, Mick. Look out. That's awesome. All right, it's not bad, right? Okay. Oh, that's good. This one, I thought, I don't know, it's a little bit more tough. If someone were to say the kangaroo is loose in the top paddock, do you know what that might mean? Nah, I don't have a clue there. <laughs> I, need, I need some help. You need to know. It, it basically means maybe you've taken a few too many chair shots to the head over the career, ah, and you're okay, a little bit okay. crazy. Got it. A little bit crazy. All right, so on to number three, Mick. If someone were to say something's cactus, do you know what that would mean? Something's cactus. It's cool. It's sharp. Oh, no, sharp, Mick. No. No, ah. like if, if I was to say something's cactus, basically here it means it's broken down, it's done for, like, you know what I mean? Well, that was what uh, my name was going to be, was going to be broken down, done for Jack. And I went with Cactus Jack instead, so I think you have to give me the points. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you that by, by fault, because there you go, that's a cool little thing. So we're on two out of three right there. <laughs> and this one, Mick, if you did decide to jump into the comedy side of things, this is quite funny. Are you going to be breaking out the budgie smuggler while you're in Australia? The budgie smuggler. That has to be uh, something sexual there. Right? <laughs> kind of. A budgie smuggler. A budgie, I'm going to, is some kind of uh, uh, synonym for genitalia. Yes. So a smuggler of budgies uh, would be one of the receiving areas of the human body. It is <laughs> the male thong. You call it a thong over there, don't uh, you? The G-string? Oh, oh, got it. Okay, all right. So we call it a, like a banana hammock. Okay, yeah, a banana bunch, hammock, yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, all right, yeah. Okay, I should have known. Okay, all right. Sorry, my bad. No, that's all good, man. That. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that specifically in, in my show. I'll find a way to use that probably uh, to Al Snow's detriment. Yes, uh, um, I'm going to look out for that. We'll be at the Melbourne show. Very much looking forward to it. So you're two out of four right now. And then I thought I'd break this out. If you guys call that the thong, we call something else thongs. We wear thongs. So what would that be? That would be a, um, a, a shirt without sleeves. Oh, no, that's a singlet. Thongs are flip-flops. Ah. 
Flip flops. Sorry, man, I didn't know. No, that's all good. Two out of five, that ain't bad. Do you reckon Al Snow will top that? Uh, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> All right, you are bringing Al out, and what can we expect from Al on the tour? From Al on the tour, Al's really like Al's got some great material. Like he comes up with great punchlines. I don't tell jokes. I imagine Al will. I imagine Al will try to put me down. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's very quick. He's very clever. He's got great stories. Been around everywhere. Been around forever. But I'm on last. So uh, I guess as we have to say, he who laughs last, laughs best. So I imagine I'll be laughing better than Al, but then I'll probably be joining the Q&A. So you'll see a lot of dueling out there. It should be a lot of fun. Al, Al keeps me sharp for sure. Oh, that's fantastic to hear there. So you're not coming out at the same time, but you will be on the stage at the same time at the Q&A, you're saying? Yeah, it's going to be fun. Al will do his thing. I'll do mine, which is an in-depth look, you know, at the one specific match. Shaping up, uh, I think it's already my best show ever, and by the time I get to Oz, you know, we'll have to be, you know, really firing at all cylinders, and then, you know, I'll be out there for about 50 minutes, 55 minutes, and then Al will come out, and it'll be a really good evening of uh, laughter and wrestling stories. Oh, hell yeah. Well, very much looking forward to it, Mick, and, and just changing things up right now. I wanted to know, and my daughter wanted to know this, she's a massive fan of Mick Foley. She said, you've got to ask Mick, what is his favorite face of Foley? Is it Cactus Jack, Man? kind or dude love <laughs> oh man I actually uh, you know what the, uh, there was a time when mankind they got real uh, light hearted you know uh, there was a lot of comedic elements uh, and the older the further I got into my run the harder I had getting her time I had to get moving around the more comedy we threw into the mix Yeah. and uh, I didn't like that I felt like I was backing out you know like I was you know it wasn't what I'd taken great pride in but over the years I found that people really enjoyed it and it's what I get asked about second most after uh, this cell match uh, my teaming up with uh, Dwayne Johnson and so it turns out that I did uh, I had a, had a much better time than I realized so I will say that the latter day mankind was my favorite face fully Oh, yeah, that's what I like to hear there, too. Uh, Same deal right here, Mick. Actually, you are responsible for getting me into wrestling back in the late 90s, and I'll never forget it. Chainsaw Charlie, Cactus Jack sort of deal came out, and just terrifying. I remember Chainsaw Charlie coming through some sort of something with a chainsaw, and I'm like, wow, this is terrifying, and I've been hooked ever since. So (laughs) you're responsible for that, man. I'm, I'm... Thank you, or I'm sorry, one or the other. (laughs) And it's definitely a good thing. Now, a lot of people like to ask, Mick, what your favorite match of all time is. I want to know, man, what's your least favorite match of all time? Do you have something that haunts you throughout the wrestling career that you'd like to forget the most? Yeah, I've got a handful of those. My very first match, you know, I only knew what I knew from wrestling at Dominic Energy's gym. And so we'd go over moves, you know, leapfrog, (laughs) leapfrog, dropkick, I think. You know, a two-part move. But when you do a leapfrog, one guy has to leap, the other guy has to duck. And uh, I didn't have enough experience to differentiate. <laughs> oh. and so, Kurt Kaufman and I both ducked, thinking the other guy was going to be even leaping. And we ran into each other like two uh, rams during a major <laughs> ritual. Uh, I got angry and told him the second time, you know, leapfrog, drop kick. And then we did the exact same thing a second time. I never uh, saw it before, never saw it since. Uh, yeah, and it's like, it's bad enough people laughing at you. It's worse when you're you're hurting both emotionally and physically. <laughs> but given the choice, anyone would take the physical hurting over the type of emotional pain that could come with uh, having a really bad match or a really bad show on stage. So um, that's why I, I like doing these shows. Uh, instead of a lot of guys do the Q&A, but there's no risk for a Q&A, you know? Like, I, I failed... Um, enormously spectacularly last time when I was at odds by trying something that no one had ever done before as long as the failures are spectacular you know I, I, I'm all for them so I'll be uh, trying some new things out and when I go out there it's, you know um, it's, a, it's a show that I've worked on but there's always the uh, potential for failure and uh, it feels very much like a wrestling match in that regard yeah well we're very much looking forward to it it's the 20 years of Hell Tour and it's heading our way in July Perth on July the 17th Adelaide July 18th Hobart, July 19th, Melbourne, the 20th, Sydney, the 21st, and Brisbane, the 22nd. All of the details are online at theundergroundaustralia.com.au. Mick, thank you so much for joining us, man. We are very much looking forward to it. Uh, Me too. Have a nice day. Thanks for the time.